Hi there, hope you're well. In this video, I'm going to be making the cheapest MFT or multifunction table that I possibly can. So a few weeks back, I made my own version of an MFT or multifunction table. Uh, thanks so much to everybody who's taken a look at that. This wasn't a budget build by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it cost very close to what an off-the-shelf MFT costs, but it was specifically designed for this space and for my needs. One of the questions, one of the comments that comes up every time I talk about MFTs is the, the relatively low price of MFT tops here in Britain. Um, these are available for about £39. In fact, I paid exactly £39 plus shipping uh, to bring it to a total of 54 quid. And I decided I'm going to build the cheapest MFT I possibly can. Pretty much the only thing I bought of any significant value is that top. I've managed to scrounge up a couple of bits of 18mm uh, board off a building site just up the, up the road here. Salvaged and a little piece of 12mm as well with a bashed up corner. I think that's going to do us all right. Uh, I've got some 20mm electrical conduit which is going to be our bench dogs. Uh, I've got uh, a basic McAllister plunge saw and I've got a little 10.8 volt drill driver and a couple of boxes of screws and a bit of T-Track and all those other things. And I'm going to put an MFT together as simply as I can using just those tools. But instead of doing it in here in the workshop, I'm actually going to take all this stuff into my back garden uh, and work off the MFT top on a set of crates just to show you how easily this can be put together. Bit bright. One of the great things about making an MFT style bench is that you get around the whole you need a bench to build a bench thing because you're already halfway there with the MFT top. I'm using fold up stacking crates as the base for a temporary bench, I'm not forgetting to empty the crate of the tools before I start, of course. There you go. Budget MFT down. So anyway, welcome to the back garden. Uh, this is the temporary measures that I'm going to use to build the bench. Obviously, I'm not suggesting for a second that this is an appropriate height for a bench. Um, but this is what I'm going to use. Uh, we'll start by, I think we'll start by making our bench dogs. So we'll get our little bits of conduit out and a handsaw. We'll get those cut up, a little bit of tape around one end to make a nice snug fit. Uh, and then we'll get the MDF cut. Then we can use the bench dogs to make the cross cuts. That's what we'll do. We're in slightly challenging conditions here. The sun keeps popping in and out. So it's a bit of a, not gonna be the highest of production values this, this video. <laughs> Sorry about that, but never mind. We'll do what we can in the circumstances. Uh, it's no good. That's a retreat to the relative shade be working in the dark from now on. Using the plans as a starting point, I'm ripping the 18 millimeter MDF down to size first. and then the 12mm strips that will form the channel for the T-Track. I've glued on the two thinner strips, then held them in place with spring clamps while I screw them down. Then I can add in the lower part of the fascia, glued and screwed again. and then I can trim it back to match the backing board.
with the front set aside for the glue to dry, I'm making my Dave Stanton style dog locks using an old guard rail connector bar cut in half, a few scraps of 6mm ply and a couple of pairs of roofing bolts cut down to fit. It's a super simple idea where the slight wedge shape cut into the plywood ensures tight contact between the bench dogs and the rail. I made these from scraps of whatever I had lying around, but if you're into your 3D printing then Dave Stanton has plans on his website, links in the description as always. So that's the Dave Stanton dog locks done. Um, with those and our super cheap bench dogs, then these will just lock that in nice and snug against the rail. That's all they need to do. I've just used the MFT top to mark the length, then cut down the front and rears to size. So one of the things I do want to change on this bench, away from the plans I made from the previous bench, is I want to have a, an overhang on this. On the other one I made the frame go all the way from side to side because that was very definitely for a set position up against a wall. With this one, to make it a little bit more flexible, you don't necessarily have to have it as this as the front and that as the back. You could spin it around and I find an overhang, I think as I said when I did my benches, before, an overhang really useful for, for clamping onto. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is bring it, oops, bring the bench width to around about the middle of the rear two holes. So that will reduce the cross cut a little bit, but I've decided I can live with that because with a bench that's a bit more maneuverable, if you want a deeper, longer cross cut, you just turn it portrait orientation. So I can live with that in order to give us an overhang. And of course, if you're making this for yourself, you could do the overhang at either end as well or instead, that's entirely up to you. I'm gonna have it at the one side, just because that makes sense to me. And we're gonna go with a 600 mil, less the thickness uh, of the front and rear, of course. So we'll mark that up, then we'll get this cut. Then, finally, <laughs> we can start nailing it together. Not nailing. With one side marked, I can cut it down, then use that as the gauge for the other side. With the glue well set on the front, I can put a couple of screws into the T-Track to secure it temporarily, then trim it back and remove it again. Here I'm using the bench dogs to help keep the front and side upright and square, and simply screwing them together. working my way around the frame until it's complete.
and then fitting the T-Track permanently. And finally adding the top, again simply with screws driven through the top into the sides, front and rear. So there we are, that's our budget bench build. Pretty much sorted. Uh, I'm really impressed with that actually. I'm obviously not on, you know, not on crates, <laughs> ideally. However, that has brought it up to a much more workable height, so not the worst thing you could do. Uh, and obviously if you did want to make this permanent, you could put legs on it or you put it on trestles or, or you know, whatever, however you want to use it. Uh, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to pack all this stuff away because the garden is a <laughs> complete tip. Uh, I'm going to get this back across the road to the workshop. We'll have a chat about what the actual costs were on this basic bench build. I'm going to pop this one in its place. If it'll fit. Okay, so I've got it upon some little scraps of 6mm because it's not quite the same height as the, the other one because we varied the plans slightly. We cut our MFT to suit our cloth as it were. So yeah, very pleased with that. Um, let's talk about the costs quickly. Obviously far and away the largest expense of the whole thing was the MFT top at £54. Um, you know, not outrageous to be perfectly honest. Uh, obviously that included shipping as well at 15 quid. Uh, like the T-Track on the front here, uh, I bought four of those for certainly less than £30, but if you wanted to buy one of those now, it cost you about 15 quid. the same one from Rutland's. Incidentally, I had a lot of people talk to me when I did my previous build about using a T-slot cutter or the, is it Matchfit, the micro jig thing? Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, a little comparison of those because it's interesting. The, the point of using regular T-Track was that you could make this whole thing with just a plunge saw rather than anything else. Whereas if you start getting into T-slot cutters you need a router and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like me to take a look at. But yeah, the T-Track was about 15 quid. Um, things like the conduit, whatever it is, uh, was £1.50. Uh, the joining bar I used for the Dave Stanton uh, dog locks. Uh, that was half of a pair that I bought for certainly less than a fiver when I did my rail square, my DIY rail square, so that was say like £2.50. Uh, <laughs> add all that up and you've got about £73 in total. Let's say another couple of quid for random screws and a bit of glue and stuff. And you've got a fully functioning MFT for 75 quid or thereabouts. I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I'm really pleased with how it sits between the benches here. In fact, I'm so pleased with it. I'm going to use this for the next build. I'm going to use the DIY Cheap and Cheerful MFT. I'm going to use the McAllister plunge saw with the DIY Dave Stanton dog locks. And I'm going to use the uh, electrical conduit bench dogs to make the next build. Next build is going to be a set of shelves that's going up there. Uh, these are going to be, a, although they're only work, workshop shelves, I'm going to make them nicely as if they were for a client. But I'm going to do them with the minimum toolkit. It's going to be the first of a series called Basic Builds, where we start with absolute basics, you know, homemade MFT, entry-level plunge saw and homemade dog locks and a drill. Maybe we'll add a tool to it with every one, so we start building up a more sophisticated tool set. But the first one's just going to be this one. Maybe we'll add a, an extra drill driver so we can drill holes and drive screws that luxury without changing bits. Um, but that's going to be the next the next build here, uh, and then after that one, we'll, what else? We can do a cabinet. Maybe we'll work our way up to a table. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see in the basic builds series. Uh, but I will leave it there for this one. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. Uh, enjoyed making it. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you as always uh, for taking a look, and thank you to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. You guys know 
you folks know how valuable your contributions are, and I don't just mean money. I mean, the conversations that we have that really help me to shape these public facing videos, they are absolutely invaluable. If you want to be part of that conversation, then come along and join in. We'd love to have you on the 10 minute workshop team, but that's it for this one. Thanks so much for taking a look. I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.